In the name of Allah, the most gracious, most merciful. And mention in the book the story of Ibrahim, peace be upon him. Verily, he was a man of truth, a prophet. Now, just because Ishmael was born from a sinful union, from a sinful union, from a sinful union between Abram and Hagar, that's not Ishmael's fault. Another passage that contributes to the reason why Christians slander Ishmael in a, uh, is a passage in Genesis 16 which allegedly, please know I'm stressing the word allegedly, calls Ishmael a wild donkey of a man. I would love to hear David Wood bring this passage up so I can bury it once and for all. Last but not least, the some Christians who claim that Ishmael was rejected by God because he was not a legitimate son of Abraham. For the Muslims who haven't heard this before, some of them believe that Abraham committed adultery and Ishmael was a product of Astaghfirullah, but that's what they believe. Now, I would be very surprised if David tries to make this claim, but I don't think he will because he and I both know that Ishmael was legitimate according to the scriptures. So the only thing I would ask from David Wood is for him to clarify to these Christians who have got this mistaken belief, so they stop slandering Abraham. Because I would like to remind the Christians, according to Genesis chapter 12, He who blesses Abraham shall be blessed. He who curses Abraham shall be cursed. Calling Abraham a fornicator, someone who committed adultery, I think is cursing Abraham. And you should back down from that. And I'm sure they all would agree with me that Ishmael is a fully legitimate son. Hagar was the wife of Abraham. This is according to the scriptures. We should be fair and frank here and get rid of false beliefs. As far as the, uh, the issue of the wild donkey of a man, I'm not building a case uh, out of that, but that is one of the promises. And if you have a problem with that, I don't know why you're quoting all of the passages right around it. From the Ishmael, from the Ishmael that the Torah called him a wild beast. Ishmael, pere Adam. Adam means a human being. Pere means wild. Wild human being. Who called him? The one who created him, God, say, Ishmael, pere Adam. Yado bakol, veyad kolbo. His hand is in everything, and everything in his hand.
Yishma'el in Hebrew means God hears. He shall be a, usually the translation here is, wild ass of a man. His hand against everyone and everyone's hand against him, he shall dwell alongside all of his kinsmen. Now, Jewish tradition takes this reference to Ishmael as a negative condemnation of nasty behavior. But what this really is, is a phenomenological observation of the tension between agriculturalists and pastoral nomadists. He will be a, not a wild ass of a man. Uh, the word wild ass is a pere, pere, as opposed to a hamor, which is a domesticated donkey. So he, as a pere adam, is going to be really a wilderness man, somebody who lives in the desert, as opposed to an agriculturalist. And God wanted Ishmael to have that righteous upbringing so that he could grow up and be a good man, a godly man, and to grow up learning of the Lord. Now, a lot of people have this false idea that Ishmael was a bad guy. And I'm going to prove to you from Scripture in this sermon that Ishmael was not a bad guy. Ishmael was a godly man, and Ishmael will be in heaven. And I will prove to you that Ishmael will be in heaven from Scripture. Sarah, the wife of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, she couldn't bear any children, no children. So, you know, getting old, Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam is getting old, Sarah is getting old, everybody's talking about she's barren, she's barren, she's barren. It's a disgraceful thing among the Eastern people not having a child. So she says, look, go unto Hagar, Hajra, and be a child by her. Now, this is how weddings took place. You know, there were no ceremonies going to court before the magistrate, and then he reads out a formula to you, and then he gives you a certificate. No. My daughter, you see all the prophets, when they went, got the wife, he said, look, he said, oh, take her to wife. That means it's yours. And he's his wife. Only man who has a right to her is that person to whom the woman is given. Hajra was supposed to have inherited her. Aha, Sarah is supposed to have been given this hajra as her maid. And she says, look here, have her. And Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, a man of God, a friend of God. Would we say that he was committing adultery with her? If he was, God Almighty would have reprimanded him. No. His friend, Khalilullah, the friend of God, Everybody says, the Jew says, the father Abraham, the Christians say, father Abraham, Muslims say, father Abraham. This father of ours committing adultery? Can we ever think like that? Can we ever talk like that? Hmm? So he goes unto her and she begets a child. Now when she begets a child, for 13 years, there was no question about an offer being made. He said, look, do you want to do this one or that one? There was no question because the woman is not getting it. Sarah is not getting any children. And for 13 more years, she didn't have anything. 13 years. Hazrat Ismail salam, was the only son and seed of Abraham for 13 years. After 13 years, Allah wants to also bless Sarah. And so he, she also gets a child and his name was Ishaq. So what is the problem? If God Almighty, according to the Bible, he says, and as for Ishmael, Ishmael thy son, and as for Ishmael, thy seed. If you believe that this is the word of God, then God is saying, Ishmael, your son. If God accepts, who the hell are you? Or any monkey, you know, to take, says, no, he's not his son. What right has anybody to come along and deny him that right? If I married a Bushman woman, or a Hottentot woman, and she gave birth to a child, I accept that child as my child. What right have you to say that's not my child? I ask you. Have you any right? So on the standard, the Jewish standard, he said, look, you think that Sarah is the legitimate wife and this is the illegitimate wife? I said, look, even then, your progeny in which Jesus came 
is a rotten, a rotten progeny than that of Ismail on the standard that you are giving. We are not creating the standards. These are not our standards. These are the standards as we are. You judge, and Jesus told you, he says, judge not, that ye be not judged. For with what judge, when ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, ye shall be measured unto you. He said, you hypocrite. He said, why seest thou the beam in thy brother's eye, and seest not the moat in thy own eye? So first remove the moat from thy own eye, before wanting to remove from your brother's eye. You must heed that warning. Heed that warning. That before you point a finger, think twice. This man, the Jew, didn't think twice. So he got into a mess. We must think twice before we open our mouth. What you say, how you judge other people. إن الله اصطفى آدم ونوحا وآل إبراهيم وآل عمران على العالمين Here we come Allah, here we come to serve you, here we come Allah, here we come